Greetings, everyone. This is Collectible Sephoria with an in-depth review of the Cinderella doll set live-action Disney film collection, recently released to complement the release of Disney's live-action film Cinderella on DVD and Blu-ray on September 15, 2015. This set of six highly detailed fashion dolls is truly stunning as it bears the main characters in the film donning their formal attires during the royal ball held by the king for the prince to find his future bride. The dolls include Cinderella, the prince, fairy godmother, Lady Tremaine, Drisella, and Anastasia. This will be a two-part video review, which will include details on Lady Tremaine, Drisella, and Anastasia on the second video review. I'll post the link down below once the video is available. Stay tuned! Starting off with packaging, it comes in a reflective type of window display gift box with its color, the same use chosen in its film poster, is a scene at the outside of the palace at nighttime during the ball. The Disney Store logo is located at the upper left hand corner with a Cinderella doll gift set right in the middle of the lower section, barely seen from the plastic window packaging. It has a carry handle on the topmost portion. The sides of the plastic window packaging have filigree patterns and butterflies adorning the borders of the packaging. The dark background of the clouds and scenic background of the palace are continued on the back of the box, as well as the filigree patterns on each side of the packaging. Disney Cinderella can be visibly seen on the upper middle section, and right below it are all the main characters included in the package. Their photos are displayed in a portrait-style manner, with filigree patterns outlining the border of each frames, and with their names written right below their photos. Starting from the left, we have Anastasia and Rizella. If I will be nitpicky here, it should have been Rizella and Anastasia, since for those who are not familiar with their characters, Rizella is the one on the left and Anastasia is the one on the right. The next photo is Lady Tremaine, followed by Cinderella, Prince, and Fairy Godmother. This set retailed at $210.95 US dollars and $230.95 Canadian dollars. Out of the box, the dolls are beautifully arranged similar to how they appear during the ball, except for the Fairy Godmother who of course is not present at that time of the ball, but is still arranged in a magical manner. Their backdrop is the outside stairs of the palace where Cinderella left her glass slipper. Let's start with the main heroine of this film, Cinderella. I have reviewed this doll when it was first released early this year, so I will link the video down below should that interest you. This doll is the exact doll sold separately before, from her face cut, makeup, and hairstyle, down from its off-the-shoulder sleeves, and decolletage made of glittering organza, embellished with plastic butterflies, with gem studs in the middle of the butterflies, sparkling satin bodies with glittering organza, with sporadic gem studded overskirt, and last but not the least, the iridescent plastic glass slippers. The only difference is the number of layers of her skirt, with the new doll having only three layers, which consists of the glittering textured light blue organza overskirt, sheer sapphire blue organza, and sky blue satin fabric, Whereas the previous doll has an addition of nylon net fabric petticoat that helps provide the gown with greater volume effect, which is lacking in the new doll released. Other than that, it is exactly the same, which I would say is the first letdown for this set if you already bought the previous doll released. Now for new buyers, the net petticoat is really not a big deal, so you still get your money's worth. 
Let's move on to the Fairy Godmother, which again is another trade-off for this set for collectors who already have the previously released doll, as it is the exact doll initially released, except for one minor detail. The magic wand is a darker shade of gray, as opposed to the metallic wand on the previous release. Everything else is the same, including its face sculpt and hairstyle, the intricate lace stand-up pleated collar, and sparkling iridescent satin gown with brocade-like texturing, faceted gem accents on the bodice, iridescent wings, and white shoes. The gown is actually two layers, though some parts of the fabric of the outer skirt are sewn to the second layer, so they really cannot be separated to become two layers. Also, the velcro closure on the back extends from the waistline up until the stand-up collar, and once opened, it will reveal the second velcro closure for the skirt. Now, at this point, you may be wondering why I decided to purchase this set, since the two dolls mentioned are basically the same as before. From here, things will get interesting, since in spite of the fact that the Prince and Lady Tremaine were already released before, they were given new outfits this time, since both of them are now wearing the clothes they wore during the Royal Ball, as opposed to the previous released version of Kit in his groom's uniform and Lady Tremaine wearing the first outfit she first donned in the film. In addition, the set now includes Cinderella's two stepsisters, Anastasia and Drisella, which was never seen before, donning their ball outfits as well. These additions are really the selling point for me here, which is why I decided to include this set in my doll collection. As for the prince or Kit's doll itself, nothing has really changed from his molded hair and face cult down to his joint articulation. If you wanted to see the previous doll review, again, click the link down below to watch it. Few similarities that they kept on this figure are the next scarf, which is the same gray satin fabric, which by the way can be removed since it has a velcro closure located on the back. And it also has the same black molded knee-high boots with same sculpted details on it. It has a vertical opening on the back of the boots, but I decided to keep the boots on since I find the task daunting, so I figure I'll just leave it alone. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. The fabric chosen is still the same false suede fabric used on the groom's attire, though the color this time is white instead of a light blue color which is both movie accurate. He wears a silver embroidered tunic with a Columbia blue collar and blue fold-over cuffs with the same embroidery pattern seen in the tunic. The buttons used were not the exact design, but it's still close enough being a silver stud on the opening of the tunic. In the film, the silver embroidery pattern is also seen on the lower back, however that detail is missing here. Also, the tail coat was supposed to have the front of the skirt cut away, but again, that detail is missing here. Underneath the tail coat is another layer of cream satin fabric extending all the way up to the shoulder area. The white denim belt is a nice addition, though not movie accurate in details, is still a fine touch with silver studs imitating a real belt with two belt loops visible on the front and is actually removed with velcro on the back. The trousers are made of white denim fabric which has a velcro closure on the back. He also has a painted white briefs. There is a silver ribbon lining vertically on the side of the pants, which is a little darker in shade comparing to the one used in the film, but nonetheless, the attention to detail amazes me since they really tried to capture the princess outfit by adding details here and there. One thing I would have liked to have been added here is his sword and white sheath attached on the left side of his pants to help complete his overall outfit. 
The two outfits have the similar concept and design, except for the ball outfit doesn't have the epaulets and sash. All articulation for the three dolls are the same as before, so if you want to watch its details, again, the link is right down below. The Cinderella doll set is truly a fan-dedicated set, since the attention to details is exquisitely accomplished, justifying the higher price tag associated with the dolls. Despite of using the same outfits on Cinderella and the Fairy Godmother, everything else in the outfits is new, which is really the selling point for this film collection set. Despite of not being 100% accurate as far as details are concerned, it still lives up to par with the highly detailed doll closer to details provided in the limited edition dolls. The scale of the dolls are 11.5 to 12 inches, still classified under Disney's classic film dolls, though on a highly detailed scale. The next review will be the remaining doll inclusions of Lady Tremaine, Drizella, and Anastasia, so please watch out on my next video update. As per Cinderella's mother, have courage and be kind. Bye!